Welcome back. This is going to be video number two on the 350 crate engine. Now, I do have some other information. Uh, we already looked at the specifics on this thing. We checked out the crankshaft, which is a it's got an Eagle rotating assembly in it, and Vortec heads, 350 block. Uh, one of the things that I noticed uh, when we first got this engine was this timing tab that's on here. It's been modificated, which is fine, but uh, and they actually cut it up to put a little zero on there. But when I degreed the cam in, the first thing I did was I obviously found top dead center. I just slipped the balancer on. And you can see that this pointer right here, if you put this on, it's about three or four degrees off, which might not seem like a big deal. And if you have a distributor with the centrifugal advance built into it, and you set your time in, you can always adjust that around and make it, you know, whatever whatever makes the car run good, which is fine. Uh, this engine came with the locked out distributor. And uh, before going to that, um, I did degree this cam in just to see what the specs on the cam were. And uh, it turns out that this cam is right here. This is what the cam that's in it is. And it's a 435, 460 valve lift. Uh, 212, 222 duration at 50. Um, and there's all that neat stuff. So when I put this information together with that cam and this engine, it turns out that this is a 602 crate engine. So it doesn't mean 602 cubic inches. That's just a part number. It is 350. But you got a 602 crate engine, a 603, and a 604. This is the 602 crate engine. Calls for 32 degrees timing. Uh, there's your spark plugs it recommends, the spark plug gap, uh, and that kind of stuff. Uh, so basically, like I say, if it's telling us 32 degrees, if we come back over here, and we look at the pointer that someone put on this thing, uh, well, we're probably 4 degrees off, so that would be 36 degrees. So if you set your timer at 32, it's going to be 36. If you set your timing, let's say someone's wanting more timing, so they're just using a light, and they set it at, let's say, 38 degrees, then you gotta add four more degrees of that, but who, who would know that? No one would know that. So with the locked out distributor, these little uh, increments in timing might not seem like a big deal, but a locked out distributor is a big deal. And I knew this was the wrong time and tab anyway, because you see how far that is away from the balancer. This time and tab is for an eight inch balancer. Uh, this is what it actually looks like without modification. But like I say, someone just got creative and it's not a big deal. They cut it, cut all of that out except the zero. No big deal. We got the right balance or the right time and tab right here. This one is for a seven inch balancer. Uh, this is actually a six and three quarter inch balancer. Uh, but without moving anything, uh, let me put my phone on the stand here. And we'll put the other balancer on and see how it lines up. Hang on one second. Okay, I got this zoomed in really close, so let's just put the correct time and tab on there and see what difference it makes. Pop this off real quick without punching y'all in the eye here. Okay, now that we can see that the uh, timing tab is lined right up to zero with this correct balancer on there. So anyway, I just wanted to get that out of the way. So the next thing we're going to talk about is uh, something I've been wanting to talk about for a long time. Is uh, There's always a big debate or discussion or an argument, whatever you want to call it. When it comes to uh, time and chain dots, so there's a few 
uh, debates that turn into uh, huge arguments online all the time. I've been on automotive forums since the 90s, and two of the biggest things that uh, when you start talking about it, turn into huge days-long discussion and argument, sometimes weeks long, is oil. <laughs> uh, don't talk about oil. Diesel oil, any kind of oil, it, that's, a, that's always a big deal. Something else has been popping up recently is uh, time and chain dots. Where should these dots be? And, uh, well, let's see if we can talk about that today. And I'm not talking about where you install it. I mean, obviously, uh, most engine builders, when they install a time and set, for a, we're talking about a small lock Chevrolet, by the way, we'll install it dot to dot, and that's just fine. Uh, I'm talking about when you put your distributor in, which way is it going to start? With the dots at dot to dot or both dots at 12 o'clock? So that's the argument. Most builders, when they install this, they'll install it dot to dot. Uh, I actually degree the cam in. Some people do, some people don't. We're not going to discuss that today. And then you put the timing cover on and you figure all about it. You don't even think about it again. And I'll show you how you can actually find true top dead center on the compression stroke um, but some people for some whatever reason try to memorize where these dots are so they'll line it up dot to dot put the covers on drop their shiver in right on number one then when they go to crank the engine well it doesn't start it backfires through the carburetor so it's because you're on the exhaust stroke and actual it just backfires let's just put it that way but it won't start because it's on the exhaust stroke so how do we know what stroke we're on and uh, how do we fix that? So this engine, just like any other engine, is a four-stroke engine. There's four strokes, intake, compression, power, exhaust. So your number one piston will be up two times. It'll be up at the top dead center on the exhaust stroke as well as the compression stroke. So how do we know what stroke we're on? Well, to talk about that, we have to talk about adjusting valve lash. And once I explain valve lash a little bit, how I do it, uh, then we'll go through the procedure and we'll look at the dots and see where we are. And that should explain it pretty well. So when we put these on, I've already got the rocker arms labeled. There's an intake rocker arm and exhaust. Just one more tidbit. When you have a uh, rocker arms with a fulcrum like this, see that flat spot inside on the trunnion? Spin this thing around. There's no flat spot there. Spin it around again. There's a flat spot. This is really trivial, and a lot of people they already know this. I get it, but it's just something to be aware of. Some people get in a hurry putting these on, and they might put this on the wrong side, and it just won't seat correctly. So your rocker nut will come loose. So just make sure that the uh, flat spot is up. So let me get my phone situated here, and um, we're going to run through valve lash. I'm going to show you the EOIC method, exhaust open intake closing method. Um, and then we have to do that to figure out where these dots are. This, trust me, this all comes into play here. Matter of fact, before we even do that, I'm going to go one more step. I'm going to show you on the camshaft, uh, the lobes on this camshaft, what the EOIC method is. I got a roller camshaft here. So hang on, let me get this set up, and we'll talk about that first, and then we'll do valve lash. Kind of jumping around here. I was just trying to figure out how to do this video for days and days and days, and I don't know. We'll just wing it see what this does. So hang tight. Okay, let's try this. This might not be the best view. Uh, we'll, we'll try it out and see what happens. So again, we're going to go over the EOIC valve adjustment method. I'm going to show you on the lobes what we have. So when we do it on the engine... It'll give you a better idea what we're looking at. And we're doing that so that we can see what stroke we're on. So that's obviously going to tell us if we're on the exhaust stroke or compression stroke. Uh, and then we'll look at the dots and see where they are. So hopefully this, this helps with uh, the arguments I see all the time. So anyway, this is a roller camshaft. A few things we got to look at first is all camshafts are the same. There are all these small block and big block camshafts. You'll see this pin right here. This pin is always in the same location. The lobes are always in the same location, unless you got a 4.7 swap, but basically nothing's going to change. This cam pin is very important to note where it is, and I'll show you that when we put it in the engine. So back to the camshaft. 
This is our exhaust lobe. We're talking about number one cylinder right now. This is the exhaust lobe. This is the intake lobe. The EOIC method says exhaust open, adjust the intake. So if we roll this around, when the exhaust valve starts to open, we adjust the intake. On the intake, we're on the back side of this lobe. Hopefully that shows up all right. Uh, very rudimentary testing here, I know. Uh, so EOIC, exhaust open, adjust the intake. Roll this around, direction of rotation, obviously. Roll this back to keep it in frame. EOIC, so exhaust open, intake closing. So the intake has to open, it's fully open. It has to close and get almost closed. Then you adjust the exhaust valve. We're on the back side of the exhaust lobe. So EOIC, exhaust open, adjust the intake. Intake closing, adjust the exhaust. So that's a quick how to, or what the lobes are right there. Now let's actually put this into play on the engine and then see what that looks like. Hang tight. Okay, let's get the rock arms put on. So we got the intake. Put that on the intake. Make sure the flat spot is up on the trunnion. Make sure your push rod is in the cup. Spin that on. Grab the exhaust rocker. Again, make sure the cup on the trunnion is up. Spin this down. Now this is a hydraulic flat tappet camshaft, so hydraulic cams are a lot easier to adjust. Um, but one thing we want to do, before we got the intake off, let's look in here real quick. Those lifters aren't completely seated, so we're going to roll the engine around until they're both seated. Okay, they're both all the way seated right now. I don't care where this is right now because we're going to go through the whole process. I did that so that we can find zero lash. So zero lash is really easy to find. Just screw those down until it stops. Uh, I don't use the spin to push rod method. A lot of guys like to do that because that's what it says in the magazines <laughs> or on the cam instructions. I don't know why. Zero lash, you're looking for up and down movement. So once all that's gone, that's zero lash right there. And then from that point, we're going to use the EOIC method. So let's spin this thing around and see what rocker moves first. And then we'll adjust the other one. We're both at, we're both at zero right now, and we're going to go a half a turn preload. But let's see where we are. Let's spin this thing around. Oh, the exhaust valve started opening. Exhaust EOIC, exhaust open, adjust the intake. So we're, again, zero last right there. I usually go a half a turn. And then lock the lock nut, or the uh, set screw down. And usually what I do from this point, if I can stay out of the camera, is back the nut off a little bit while I keep pressure on the set screw and then bump them at the same time. That locks it down. Okay, EOIC, so we got the intake adjusted. So we're going to spin this thing around and watch the intake rocker open all the way and start to close. It's almost closed. Now we want to adjust the exhaust rocker. So with this, we want to go a half a turn preload. Lock the set screw down. Back this off a little bit. Bump them both together. It locks it. So now we got them adjusted. But let's roll this back around and see uh, where the um, dots are. Let's roll this back around to the exhaust opening. Actually, let me show you this instead. So I did that to show you this. Um, you know, let me take this timing pointer off. It's all up, it's all up in my business here. Hang on a second. Uh, you know what? Yep, hang tight. I want to be able to see the dots very clearly here. Because this is, like I say, a huge argument on automotive forums all the time. So I want to make sure that everyone can see where these dots are right now. Okay. All right. So what we're going to try to do is back this whole works up here so I can turn the engine over. I 
want you to be able to watch the uh, rocker arms. Again, this is the exhaust and this is the intake. And when these dots are lined up, we're gonna see which one's moving. So the dots are coming down. They're almost lined up at uh, six and 12. So almost dot to dot. It's the exhaust rocker. So we're on the exhaust stroke right now. So you saw the exhaust valve open and close. That means we're on the exhaust stroke. And we are dot to dot. And remember I talked about the cam pin? That's the important part. This cam pin is at three o'clock. So when you're dot to dot, your cam pin's at three o'clock, you're 100% on the exhaust stroke. There's no question about it. Now, some people say, well, I'll put mine in dot to dot and it starts every time. Well, um, I don't really know how that is. I mean, unless you have a, a Chinese timing chain, I guess, I don't know. But if this pin is at three o'clock, you're on the exhaust stroke. We want the pin at nine o'clock and both dots at 12. But let's, let's put that in action. Let's see if that really works. So I'm going to spin this so that both dots are at 12 o'clock. I'm trying to keep all this in frame. Watch this intake rocker right here. It goes intake, compression, power, exhaust. So once the intake rocker opens and closes, that means we're on the we're coming up on the compression stroke. So let's see what happens. The intake is opening, close, and we're coming up on 12 and 6. So that's the compression stroke. The intake rocker opened and closed, means we're on the compression stroke. Dots at 12 and 12. And your cam pin is at 9 o'clock. So I don't know how you argue with that, but I don't know. Lots of people argue about that on automotive forums, and it's, it's most automotive forums. So this really just people don't know. I mean, obviously, when you install a camshaft, you install this dot to dot because it, it makes it easy. You can install your, your camshaft this way. It's fine. But what you're doing when you install your cam and your timing set, I keep saying camshaft, but I'm talking timing set. When you install your timing set, dot to dot is real easy to see if you're in line. So once you're dot to dot, most guys will degree the camshaft. Well, some people degree the camshaft. You don't absolutely have to. I prefer to. Uh, there's reasons for that. We're, we're not talking about that today. But that's the compression stroke right there. Uh, and then, just to prove this out, I do plan on putting this on the uh, run-up stand. I have a run-up stand that my buddy built. And so, I might get a timing cover and cut it out so that you can see the timing chain and the gears and where the dots are. And we'll try installing this. We'll put this dot-to-dot -dot We'll install a distributor and we'll try to see if we'll start. And then we'll pull the distributor out. We'll line this up at 12 and 12. And then we'll restab the distributor and then see if it starts. One way it's going to start and one way it's not. But anyway, that's just a quickie. Something that I just see argued online all the time. <laughs> so I kind of want to make a video about it. Uh, anyway, if you have thoughts about it, let me know and uh, the next video Hopefully I'll have this thing put together and up on the run-up stand All right, talk to you later